Hey, hi, hello. Today we're going to be talking about Empire of the Vampire. I personally love single book reading vlogs. I think they're so much fun. So I'm gonna be doing one for this book. As you can see, I've already started it. I am on page 75 because um, I wanted to get a good grasp of what the story was before I came to you and talked to you about it. I currently have a cold, which is why my voice might sound a little bit funny if you are a subscriber to my channel. Also, I will 100% be doing spoilers. I was a little bit on the fence when I first started this book, but now I'm at the point where I want to discuss this book with other people who have read it and loved it. And if you haven't read it or loved it, just be aware that I will be spoiling things and I'll be talking about the deets. I'll give you guys a quick summary and then once I am done with that, I will let you know. And if you don't want any spoilers, you can leave right after that. So Empire of the Vampire is the book following this man named Gabriel and he used to be a silver saint. At the beginning of the book, you don't really know what that is though. So I won't let you know until I get to the spoiler part of this video. Now, 27 years ago, the sun set for the last time and there has never been daylight since. And because of this eternal darkness, vampires have taken up, become masters of the land and have basically killed off almost all of humanity. Our main character, Gabriel, is in a prison at the opening of the book and he is talking with a vampire, the one who is imprisoning him. And the vampire is saying that he needs to hear Gabriel's life story for certain reasons and he's going to be writing it all down. Gabriel then starts his life off from the very beginning and starts to tell the entire story of his life and part of the story eventually is going to be getting into this chalice called the Grail. Along with all of that there are these amazing illustrations throughout the book which are said to be drawn by the vampire as he is writing down the story of Gabriel. So that's it. If you don't want any spoilers leave now or forever hold your peace. I'm loving this so far. I'm really, really, really enjoying it. To be fair, I've liked a lot of Jay Kristoff's books up until now. Let me see, he had a thing here. So I have read the entirety of the Nevernight Chronicles, which I really enjoyed book one and book two, and I hated book three, but that's not what we're talking about. I have also read all of Illuminae and really enjoyed all of those. And I have read the first two of the Aurora Cycle, loved book one, hated book book two. Haven't read book three yet. I'll be doing that actually later this month, so that's really exciting. And then I've never read any of his Lifelike or his Lotus Wars series. But I, going into this, kind of know what to expect from Jay Kristoff, and I feel like he's there. He has this kind of raunchy, humorous writing style, which I don't actually mind, which is really funny because I normally say I don't like humorous books, but his humor is kind of this dry sort of humor where it's almost not funny, but it is kind of funny. And he also has this like overly poetic writing style, which I understand does annoy a lot of people and they, they can't get into his books, but I love it. I think it's so fantastic and I actually really prefer fantasy books that have like a lot of prose to them and have a lot of metaphors and a lot of imagery. So this book is right up my alley. It is written in such a way that there are moments where you're kind of, it's, I don't want to call it old English because it's not old English. Old English is not actually what people think it is, but it is like not modern speech. And so there are some moments where you kind of have to get into the vernacular of the story. It's also taking place in like a French culture. So they say things like we oui, and monsieur and uh, me familia between the writing of just how these characters talk with each other and then the French influences, it does take you a little bit to get into it. But it's beautifully written and I'm so enjoying myself. I'm at the point now where our main character had this weird interaction with blood and since I'm spoiling things I can tell you all, he uh, has a girlfriend. He went down on said girlfriend during her time of the month and uh, realized that he has a taste for blood and can't be sated. Uh, right after that, he was taken away by the Silver Saints and he is at this school training to be an elite warrior. And while he was there, he was told that what had happened is that his mother had been graped by a vampire and she had given birth to him. So he is a half breed. So he is basically stronger than a normal human, but doesn't have quite all of the faults of a vampire. And so they have bound 
themselves together as silver saints and are now hunting vampires down to kill them. Where I'm at, he is just training. He has gotten his first sword. He has gotten his first horse. And uh, he has eyes for a fair maiden off across the land, but he hasn't made any actions yet because apparently they're supposed to be chaste or celibate. I know just from how our main character talks in the present timeline already that he's not gonna be sticking with that. I'm so excited to be continuing on with this. I am tabbing it and I'm also highlighting and underlining. I am highlighting and underlining as I go because I am just really enjoying this. Let me explain my colors for you really quickly. Um, so this kind of like cream color that's super hard to see is anything for super beautiful written but more than just like one sentence if it's just one sentence I'm just gonna highlight it and not tab it any of the red is something that I think is really important about our main character and anything in this blue purple color is anything that I think is like a myth folklore legend or something that I think is really important to the world building of the story hi more updates on Empire of the Vampire hopefully my white noise isn't too loud because I don't feel like turning it off right now there's a talking sword in this book I haven't seen that since Warbreaker. Well, I mean, Oathbringer. But Warbreaker was the last time I saw a talking sword. And I freaking love Nightblade, so I'm so excited to get to know this sword. Uh, so yeah, I got to the part where he decided to stop telling about his school days, and now he's telling about his, like, later years when he is uh, a bastard. I'm still really enjoying the book, but I definitely don't care about this section as much as I care about the school section, and I think that's simply because I got so into the school section, and then he, like, cut it off when I was really into it, that I didn't want to give that up. He did have to kill his horse. And it brought me back to the days of sobbing as a small child while watching Never Ending Story. That movie got me so bad, and apparently I'm not over that scene. Um, I didn't cry in the book, though, this book. And I am right at chapter 7 of part 2, which if you know, the illustration, I'm not going to show you, is a naked lady. Before I forget to add this final bit, uh, two things really quickly. If you've also read Nevernight, I think you need to read actually into whatever the sequel is, not God's Grave, Dark Dawn. Um, you know that in that book, well actually, no, you can read the first one. If you've ever read Nevernight, you know that in that book, the sun never sets. There's never nighttime, and that the moon is like a big part of the story in the later books. In this book, the sun never rises. It's always night. In Never Night, it's never night. And in Empire of the Vampire, it's always night. I, I, don't, I don't know what J. Kristoff is doing, but it's something. I get such bisexual vibes from our main character. There's just something about the fact, like, he's really into women and talks about women sexually, romantically, attraction-wise a lot describes the female body a lot, but there's something about every single time he meets a man where he just describes him as beautiful, where I'm like, dude, dude, it's fruity. Uh, there was this one line, let's see if I can find it for you all. Here we go, I found it. Um, I had the almost irresistible urge to brush the hair out of his face. I swear if this boy doesn't get with another boy before the end of this book, then book two better have it. Hi, it's been a little bit since we've talked about Empire of the Vampire. I think I'm super duper close to halfway. I'm on page 344. I'm doing good and I'm loving the book. There have been some crazy reveals, but I think I'm going to specifically talk about two of them right now. So for one, we learned that what is her name? Azzy uh, is the bastard daughter of the emperor. Uh, oh my god. I also think I've connected some dots that she might be the vampire that's haunting Gabriel's dreams. I don't have proof of that one yet. And I don't know. I know that like 
they're married and they have a daughter, but I don't believe that it's a happily ever after. I'm convinced that something happened to his wife and daughter and that's why he's like wandering the wilderness slash is the way he is. I just, I don't trust Jay Kristoff to give me a happy ending that his wife and daughter are just like waiting for him. I'm convinced they've been taken over by vampires, are either dead or out there. Uh, the other big reveal that we just learned, I actually learned it like a few pages ago while I was on my lunch break and I was screaming, is we figured out that Dior is the grail and that his like great 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 grandfather was the Jesus of this world and that he has these magical abilities that no one else has. Like he cut his palm and he was able to heal people with his blood. And that's amazing. I'm still rooting for, this is awful, but I'm basically rooting for every single person in this book to be a love interest with our main boy Gabriel, except for his wife. Uh, like whenever him and Chloe are talking, I'm like, heck yeah. And whenever him and um, Jean-Francois are talking, I'm like, heck yeah. And every single time him and Dior are talking, I'm like, heck yeah. And every time him and Aaron, which they are mortal enemies, they hate each other. They want to kill each other. I'm like, but you know what you could do with that hatred? You could kiss. Okay, so our band of Merry men are traipsing through the wilderness. Gabe is an adult and they get to this forest. Oh my god. Oh my god. Freaking deer with like its... Okay, so they shoot the deer in the neck and then its mouth splits open and it splits down the back of its head and it screams and when it turns half its face is just disformed and disgusting and it screams at the top of its lungs anyways now they're out of the forest and they just made it to the keep the monastery and everyone is dead and all their dead bodies are lined up in a gross manner and i was kind of skipping ahead to see where we were going to change timelines and I saw this illustration which tells me that very soon Big Bad Vampire Voss is going to show up and they're going to have a showdown and that's not good because our main boy Gabe is not at his strongest. Oh, oh my god. I'm not, mm, I'm not okay. That, that scene, first off, let me get comfy. First off, that scene was written so well, but I'm in so much pain right now. Um, I think the only reason why I'm not crying is because I late quite literally stopped right at the part that was going to make me cry to come and talk to you all. I think if I had like stayed in the emotion of this book, I would be currently sobbing. I, uh, everyone is dead. Everyone except Gabe and Dior are dead. And I just read the part where Chloe is like, uh, Dior is all that matters and letting go of my hand, she plunged down into the dark. You know what? I appreciate Jay Kristoff for doing his best to hurt me because for whatever reason, I enjoy reading painful books and this hurt like a son of a bitch. One chapter later, <laughs> I'm already stopping to talk to you all again. Let me pull this bitch over here. I was gonna come and talk to you all about the fact that Mr. Kristoff decided to kill everyone in like the best way possible. Blamey wasn't allowed to sing his final song and I can never say her name right. Siorza? We're gonna go with that. Um, wasn't, was told that she would never be killed by man nor monster and yet was kind of killed by both and yet neither and then and then Rafa was killed uh because of his lack of faith but that's not what we're here to talk about now because I've just read the next chapter and found out that Dior is not a boy also I learned quite recently that he now she I I'm gonna figure that out in the next chapter pronouns will be coming soon that he <laughs> was way younger than I thought thought and I kind of regret the decision of wanting them to kiss uh because he's supposed to be 14 but now I know that he's 16 so still weird still not gonna ship it but up until I realized that he was a minor and that our main character Gabe was in his 40s at the time um I was into it but now I'm not because that's not cool but he's a girl she's she's a she's a girl I'm gonna turn you off and I feel like you're gonna 
be coming back to me in just a minute. So stay tuned. Why? 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 Every, mm, every single time he tells the freaking story of when he's younger, I'm so excited to get back to it. And now for the first time, I don't want to go back to when he was younger and hear about how he did his things because I need to know more about Dior. He did this on purpose. He did this on purpose. It's, it's my bedtime. I want to go to bed. I can't. I physically can't put this book down. I have been like heavily focused reading for the last 30 to 40 pages. I have not like stopped minus talking to you all. And it's not just like, oh, I'm enjoying my read. Like I am reading so fast. I can't stop. I'm like at the edge of my seat. Like I'm literally right now I'm on the floor reading, but I was on the edge of my bed reading like pin straight, just going. I can't believe that scene. I can't believe that scene. Oh my god. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I am at least gonna start this next section and depending on how it goes, um, I might just put it down and go to bed because if it starts picking up, I can't have that happen. I can't be reading until the wee hours of the night because unfortunately I do have to be responsible. I have just broken page 400. There's only like 300 pages left and I kind of feel like just marathoning it over the next 24 hours. I won't be able to but I kind of want to. Mm. I just flipped ahead because I'm a curious little shit and I have 142 pages until I get back to the future timeline. I'm not okay with this. It's the next morning and I'm getting ready for work. Um, I read like 20 pages after I left you guys last night. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the fact that I realized while I was trying to fall asleep last night that just because everyone is dead doesn't mean that they're not gonna come back as vampires. And if I know anything about Jay Kristoff, I know that he likes to take the most painful path possible. So I can expect at least one of them, probably Chloe, but maybe all of them, uh, coming back and haunting all these people and there being a giant battle scene where they have to kill their friends. Anyways, that's my prediction. Hi. It's the next day and we're gonna film here instead of in my room because I left the setup from earlier when I was filming and I don't feel like taking it apart to go into my bedroom. Um, excuse me, I quite literally just sobbed while reading this book. I wanted to come and talk to you while I was crying, but it was in the middle of a chapter and I wanted to get to the end of the chapter and in that time I calmed down a little bit. I have started marking all of the pages that I cry in or at least get like teary-eyed in. Um, so we have the large section which I talked to you guys about yesterday when everyone was dying and then we have this small section here which is when I sobbed really hard just now. I am really close to page 500. I am gonna keep reading this evening. I don't know for how much longer but I'm definitely gonna pass page 500. Just caused me to sob uncontrollably was Aaron and Baptiste have been found out. So really not like a ton has happened since I last talked to you. The last 100 pages have been kind of, I don't wanna say uneventful, but like leading up to other things that are going to be happening. So we had them fight that like crazy hot vampire woman and then they came back and um, Aaron and Gabe are brothers now. They've they fought together. They're not necessarily friends, but they're brothers. And then Gabe sees Aaron with his lover and is kind of conflicted about this whole entire idea of him being with another man and then starts to realize that um, he doesn't think it's a sin and that he doesn't mind that they're together and that he's happy, I guess, that Aaron has found love. He's starting to kind of feel like he has a place here amongst his brothers. Then he goes to Astrid and they have a fling. I'm honest to God, not totally sure how far they went, but they definitely did some stuff together. And then Aaron and Baptiste were found out and Gabe watched um, Greyhand basically rescue them. And the thing that made me cry was watching Baptiste try to defend Aaron and try to say that like, he took advantage of Aaron, that they shouldn't punish Aaron, that it was all him, and Aaron having to relive the memory of his stepfather beating his first lover to death because 
his first lover basically said the same thing and Aaron didn't stick up for him. And that hurt. I love Aaron. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in this book. I see how he's not a great person, but he's such a great character. And that's really all I ever care about when I'm picking favorite characters. Aesthetically be more attracted to Dior, but Aaron's right up there for me. Welcome to Saturday. I was supposed to be finishing up this book last Tuesday, but unfortunately my week has just been kind of crazy, but I'm still going and I'm still loving it. I have about 80 pages left, so I will be finishing it up today. I have already read, uh, I don't know how many pages, like 20, 30 pages today, not a ton. Um, I'm at the point where like, I'm just kind of nervous, so I don't want to finish the book. He, he, as in Gabriel and Dior, have like crossed the ice, Gabe went under the ice, the horse died, they lived inside the horse for a night and then they made it to the castle whose name I can't remember and they ran into, I know Aaron's name, I can't think of the other guy's name, but they ran into them. It made me so happy and it made my heart happy because Aaron is one of my favorite characters as you guys know. But then the chapter ended, vampires are coming, so I don't want to keep reading. I don't want keep reading if he kills Aaron. Okay, I finished the dishes and then I read the next 10 pages and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, the battle has not started yet, but Danton brought Rafa back. He like, what is the word? Um, became. And so he's basically like a mindless vampire. He's basically a zombie um, who drinks blood instead of eating brains. And um, Dior begged Gabriel to take care of that and he did. I was expecting that to be a lot worse because I, I predicted earlier that he was going to bring them back um, and I think it could have been worse, but I'm going to keep going now. Well, I got another black page and I'm not even at the freaking battle scene, so I knew, I knew that his wife and daughter were dead and still that chapter hit me like a bag of bricks. I have 50 pages left. The actual like flashback of how everything went down with Astrid and Patience and Gabe and Voss wasn't bad and I didn't cry during it. I only cried when he like first told Dior what happened. But one thing I noticed that I wanted to point out to you all is that Astrid and Justice the horse died in the exact same way which is Gabe stabbing them with Ash. I thought that was interesting. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but I thought it was interesting. Okay, I have 30 pages left of this beast. There was no giant battle scene at Aaron's keep, uh, so that's good, but I'm past the big battle and now they're taking Dior to the place. I can't think of its name. It starts with an M. Chloe's alive. I feel like I knew that somewhere in my head. Um, I had definitely thought it a few times since like there wasn't a body and we didn't actually see her die. I was like, she's probably still alive. And I'm not in love with that, but I'm never in love with characters when they're like dead and then they come back to life. I just think it's kind of a gimmick. But they're on their way and I have 30 pages left and I'm like, there's got to be like a final resolution. Like there can't just be 30 pages of like no more built up, right? I mean, I'm assuming that Dior is going to end Dade's death, but they've already beat the big boss man and I know that 30 pages is not enough for us to go and fight the big big boss man that Gabe needs to do in order to like literally fulfill the first sentence of this book and to like avenge his wife and daughter. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 30 pages and I'm not super looking forward to that. He got me with this one. I wouldn't have bet that Celine was still alive. I'm I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. I feel like it's been a long time since I've been this shocked by something. Bravo, okay. Um, I have like 15, no, I have like 10 pages left. Oh my God. I'm parched after reading this. I finished. First off, five stars. I think this might be my second favorite book I read this year. Uh, definitely my favorite book I've read this year that was published this year. Um, I know that I've been avoiding talking about uh, the whole entire Goodreads Choice Awards drama that's been happening on Twitter and Goodreads, but I still don't understand why this wasn't put on the list. I would have voted for this. 
this was way better than Silver Flames. Um, nothing against Silver Flames. This was just objectively a good book. Like, well written, well thought out, well developed. J. Kristoff always has so many twists and turns and it's a fun ride and I just loved it. The ending left me wanting more but I definitely feel like it kind of ended in a weird spot. Like, I guess not, because like we have Dior and Gabe and they're about to go meet his sister and like that timeline has finished. The the ritual failed. And then we have like the, the night ending with him and Jean-Francois. It makes sense, but I could have kept going, I guess is my point. I could have read another 700 pages, which will hopefully be book two, and I think it's gonna be a trilogy, so also book three when it eventually comes out, which who knows when it'll be coming out. I hope next year. Jay Kristoff is pretty damn good about writing things quickly. I mean, he did just finish Aurora's End, and as to my knowledge, he's not working on anything else, so I don't see why book two won't be coming out next year, or at least maybe in the beginning of 2023. And I have no clue what the title is gonna be because Empire of the Vampire is such a nice loose rhyme. I hope he comes up with a clever title. Anyways, I loved that. Five out of five stars. Everything about this was just fan flippantastic. I loved the entire thing. I mean, look at this, and then you don't even get to see, I didn't actually tab all of my highlights and comments, questions and concerns. I don't even know if I showed you guys. I even like doodled on one of the pages. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hope you're having a good time. Hope you enjoyed that book as much as I did, because that was freaking great. This week, there'll be an extra video surprise, so keep watching. I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye.